and welcome back to Baldy Cats. Now, today we're going to be having a look at a presentation by a flat earther called Quantum Eraser. And I think the kindest thing I can say about Quantum Eraser is that he has a very endearing, overwhelming sense of confidence in his own ability. I think the problem with people like this is that they are so stupid that they have no idea how stupid they are. He also directed his presentation specifically at me. And here are some of the lovely compliments he gave me. Conspiracy cats. Crayon Munch and Mr. Magoo. They're not crayons. This this physics teacher hit Phil sixth grade intro to physics. So to put the presentation you're about to see into context, Quantum Eraser is one of those flat earthers that believes that we need a dome between the atmosphere and the vacuum of space, some kind of barrier. And he's addressing me because in a previous video, I made the outlandish claim that we don't need any kind of membrane separating the atmosphere from the vacuum of space. Here's his take on the situation of how gas behaves. Now, notice how he gets increasingly more excited every time he says the word container. A gas is a sample of matter that conforms to the shape of a container in which it is held and acquires a uniform density inside the container, even in the presence of gravity and regardless of the amount of substance in the container if not confined to a container now i've had to stop that though because he was getting that excited that things might get a bit inappropriate for our younger viewers if i let him say container a few more times anyway the presentation begins and the format of this presentation is he quotes something i say and then he tries to rip it apart starting with this conspiracy cats the second law of thermodynamics is about the movement of energy not the movement of matter I, I I nearly fell off the chair. I couldn't believe that I that he actually said that. I had to go back and listen to it a few times. What the hell is he talking about? Right, I'll tell you what I'm talking about, but before we do that, we need to put that quote into some sort of context. Um, Quantum Eraser believes that the atmosphere must burst off into the vacuum of space because entropy must always increase. Therefore, disorder must always increase. Therefore, the gas particles of the atmosphere must disperse. I'm simply making the point that entropy can increase if we have exchanges of energy and not necessarily the gas particles themselves carrying that energy. So take a look at this. We all know that the Earth's source of energy is the sun and the Earth absorbs high frequency, short wavelength, high energy photons from the sun. And a lot of these are absorbed by the Earth and then re-emitted back into space. But when they are re-emitted back into space, they are re-emitted as longer wavelength lower frequency, lower energy photons. Now what this means is we are emitting more photons back into space than we are absorbing from the sun, which perfectly fits the description of an increase in entropy. Now what I do want to point out is that the atmosphere also plays a role in this. When those photons are emitted by the Earth, they are absorbed by different layers of the atmosphere and then re-emitted again at those longer wavelengths. Now in the description I've given you a link to this scientific paper here which is all about atmosphere and its behaviour in terms of entropy and in that paper and any paper you'll find on atmosphere and entropy we get the statement that essentially energy flows from the sun to cold space via the earth thus having an increase in entropy. Now I am looking forward to Quantum Eraser's, how can I put it, a uh, unique take on that paper. Um, that should be very interesting. But for now, it does seem, Quantum Eraser, that your claim that to increase entropy, the atmosphere must burst off into space is not supported by mainstream science in any shape or form. Um, and I haven't even mentioned gravity yet. How do you feel? For fuck's sake, man! But it gets worse for Quantum Eraser. You see, he's claimed over and over and over again that to obey the second law of thermodynamics and to have entropy increasing, the gas itself must burst off into space. And he completely ignores any arguments about the movement of energy. But when he starts reading his own definitions of entropy, well, take a listen for yourself. From the entropy site edu, in classical thermodynamics, it is viewing entropy increase as a measure of the dispersal of energy from localized to spread out at a given temperature. Yeah, and that definition completely fits what I'm saying. For fuck's sake, man! I think the problem with people like this is that they are so stupid that they have no idea how stupid they are. Again, from the entropy site edu, gas expansion into a vacuum. The mixing of ideal gases or liquids, diffusion, effusion, colligative effects, and osmosis each fundamentally involves an increase in entropy due to increased dispersion of energy. 
And yet again, you are supporting my stance. The second law of thermodynamics is about the movement of energy, whether that energy is carried by matter or not. In molecular thermodynamics, it is considering the change in the system or surroundings or their total for which there are fewer accessible microstates to one for which there is an increased number of accessible microstates. I mean, don't you know this? Yes, I do, but at this point we've shown it's completely irrelevant to your argument. But for those people who don't know what microstates and macrostates are, let's take a look at this. Now here, Quantum Eraser has bought himself a new house, and we're going to use this new house as a, an analogy for microstates and macrostates. I've linked a video in the description uh, that does it with far better graphics than I can achieve. However, the macro state here is that Quantum Eraser is in the house. That's the big picture. It doesn't matter what room he is in, but we can describe him as being in the house. But of course, in reality, he could be in the bedroom or he could be in his talking nonsense room. Now, the room he is in is what we're going to define as the micro state. But the micro state, whether he's in the bedroom or the talking nonsense room, isn't going to affect the macro state, which is the fact that he is in the house. And to put this into context with a gas, the macro state is just the, the overall large scale thermodynamic properties of that gas. But if Quantum Eraser went and bought himself a bigger house like this one, then while we can still claim he has the same macro state, he is inside the house, we can see that the number of rooms he can occupy, the number of micro states he can occupy whilst having that macro state of being in the house is bigger. He could be in his bedroom, his talking rubbish room, his talking nonsense room, his talking shit room and his talking crap room. He can be in any of those rooms, but yet still have the macro state of being inside the house. Now we can compare that to the first house he bought where there was only two rooms and two possible microstates. So we would say that the biggest house has an increased entropy. In other words, there are more possible ways that those particles could orientate themselves to give us the same macrostate. So that's what quantum eraser means when he uses the word microstate, or at least it would be what he meant if he actually took time to understand the concept and not just read a definition. Excuse me. <coughs> I've got an awful cold. Are you on medication? No, it's only a cold, I'll get through it, but I have, uh, I have got to drink a hot lemon. Thanks for asking. Anyway, carry on with your presentation. Conspiracy cats. The particles that have made it that high up in the atmosphere have already done so much work against gravity and have radiated off so much of their energy as heat that they have almost no energy left whatsoever. What? 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 Sorry, can we just hear the end of that sentence again? It, it, it tailed off a bit. What? 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 Yeah, I thought you might start to stutter there because this is where your downfall really starts and it's brilliant. So essentially what I'm saying is by the time gas particles get so high in the atmosphere, they have done a lot of work against gravity. They have raided off a lot of heat. They've got less uh, weight of air particles pushing down on top of them. But they don't really have a lot of energy. They've no desire to go anywhere. But don't take it from me. Let the big man explain it. And so it's, it's not that... Earth is holding the atmosphere down, although it is. It's that the air pressure out there has no urge to go anywhere other than just staying right where it is. Right. Yeah. Exactly. A combination of a lack of energy of those gas particles plus the action of gravity is more than enough to keep that atmosphere in place, while the second law of thermodynamics and entropy is obeyed by the movement of energy from the sun through the Earth into cold space. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, quantum eraser, this is where you unravel yourself. and It's beautiful. A gas is a sample of matter that conforms to the shape of a container in which it is held and acquires a uniform density inside the container. Now let's listen to that second bit. This is really important. In which it is held and acquires a uniform density inside the container. So the very definition of gas pressure that Quantum Eraser is using in his own demonstration states that the density of the gas pressure, therefore the pressure at any point in the container, must be the same, making this impossible quantum eraser his favorite word is container quantum eraser his favorite word is container you see just by using a simple balloon and letting it go higher and higher in the atmosphere we can see it expands because there is no uniform density of gas pressure so therefore by your definition there can't be a container thank you for proving my point quantum eraser for fuck's sake, man! I know Quantum Eraser, it's not going well for you at all, is it? But um, for the rest of us, it's fantastic. Now, Quantum Eraser doesn't give up there. He tries to argue against the fact that I've said uh, that the particles really high up in the atmosphere don't have a lot of energy and don't have a lot of urge to go anywhere. Um, and he tries to use the thermosphere to argue that. 
the average kinetic energy of gas particles is proportional to what? The absolute temperature of the gas. And all gases at the same temperature have the same average kinetic energy. So, uh, that high up in the atmosphere, crayon munching Mr. Magoo, is the thermosphere, where temps can reach better than 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. They're gaining energy. Quantum Eraser, you know you've got this wrong again, don't you? What? For fuck's sake, man! Right, here we go. First of all, the thermosphere might have an incredibly high temperature, but that doesn't mean that there is more energy in the thermosphere than there is lower down in the atmosphere. You see, temperature and energy are different things. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy per molecule. However, in the thermosphere, the atmosphere is so incredibly thin that even though each molecule has a lot of energy, it's actually very cold. You would literally freeze to death if you stepped out of your spacesuit in the thermosphere. So energy hasn't increased. And secondly, the particles of gas in the atmosphere haven't gained that high temperature by moving through the atmosphere. They've gained that high temperature because they are absorbing X-rays and ultraviolet rays from the sun. In fact, the reason the thermosphere is so close to being a vacuum is the fact that the particles beneath it haven't had the energy to rise that high for reasons that we've already discussed. So to claim that we can't have an atmosphere next to the vacuum of space because, in your words, the atmosphere or the particles of gas in the atmosphere actually gain energy as they go higher is absolute codswallop. For fuck's sake, man! I think the problem with people like this is that they are so stupid that they have no idea how stupid they are. But he doesn't give up there. He then claims that if the gas particles are losing energy, then they must cool and condense and the whole atmosphere must rain down on us. And what happens to gases when they cool? After you answer that, then where's the liquid in the upper atmosphere? My word, sir! You see, the thing is, what everybody watching this video already knows is that boiling points aren't fixed. They're dependent on pressure. Just take a look at this beaker of water being placed into a vacuum chamber. Now, I've linked this video in the description, but what it clearly shows is that when we remove the atmosphere around something, then liquids have a tendency to want to move towards the state of being a gas. Now, Quantum Eraser, you're a big fan of entropy in the second law of thermodynamics. This is entropy in action. A more ordered state like a liquid becoming a less ordered state like a gas because the pressures around it are lower. Now, given your fantastic understanding of the second law of thermodynamics and entropy, I'm surprised that you're surprised by this. For fuck's sake, man! I know, right? How many times can you contradict yourself in your own presentation? It's fantastic. Um, anyway, in one last uh, gasp, desperate attempt to salvage some sort of credibility, Quantum Eraser tries to invoke Newton's first law and state that any gas particles that are rising must continue to rise because of, well, here we go. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So Quantum Eraser, if I'm reading you right, you're saying, unless I can demonstrate some sort of force which will change the speed and direction of an object, then Newton's first law says that the particles of the atmosphere must move off into space. Are you ready? I think the problem with people like this is that they are so stupid that they have no idea how stupid they are. For fuck's sake, man!